Brought to you by Freeplay Human Power Devices, cat5.tv slash freeplay. One of the things about Linux that sometimes holds people back from switching from Windows is the in, inaccessibility of certain applications. And so, you know, sometimes you think, well, I'm sick of Windows, so mm -hmm. I'm just going to go buy a Mac. Well, then you've got the same problem where the same programs, you know, if you use QuickBooks, you can't use QuickBooks anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, so you, you run into the same kind of snags because it's a different operating system. It'd be like switching from BlackBerry to Android. Right. You wouldn't have the same access, or worse yet, switching from Android to BlackBerry. There's such a difference in what's available on those two different platforms. Programs like Valve Steam are there to try to bridge the gap so that um, there's not such a gap between platforms. Steam works on Mac, Linux, and Windows, and it's a game delivery mechanism, so you, it's actually set up in such a way that, uh, that you can install games from any of those platforms. Okay. Okay. So if a game is available on Linux using Valve Steam, which is now available for you, and we're going to take a look at it in just a few moments, um, if it's available on Linux, you install it. Now it's a part of your account. You go up to your Windows computer, and you've got uh, Steam on that as well, and you can install it on there. So if you buy it, you know, you can, it's like a, it's like a disc, but you don't have the disc to move around. It's all done through downloads. So... Really, That's really cool convenient. mechanism, and I think this is going to really push uh, Linux to, to the gamer. I mean, if you're a gamer, check this out tonight. What we're going to start with is actually installing it. So I've brought up the website, and uh, we're going to have all the information for you in the show notes of episode number 285. But basically, I'm just going to, uh, to the Steam website. That is steampowered.com. I've clicked on Install Steam, and uh, now you see that it's given me a, uh, a Linux installer, or in your case, it might be Windows or Mac. So I'll click on Install Steam now, and that's going to give me a, a Debian package. So here I am in Chrome, so it's putting it down at the bottom there, asking me if I want to keep it. So say, yep, keep, and then I can click on it as it's downloading and tell it to open. Well, that's going to open it as soon as it's done. So now with... Uh, Zorin OS 6 and Ubuntu and Ubuntu based distros. It's going to bring up the Ubuntu Software Center. And you see uh, the Steam Launcher is ready to install. So I'll click on install. Now, just a note that, uh, that I actually had to upgrade to a later version of Zorin OS in order to do this. So you may have to do the same if you're using an older distro. So we'll just install that. Doesn't take too long. There are a fair number of games that are available for Linux without uh, using Steam, but what's neat about this is it gives you a deliver delivery platform uh, where everything is available in one place. So now that it's installed, it just tells me that uh, all I need to do is just run it uh, for the first time. So we'll close out of the Software Center, and we'll launch that. Oh, and there it goes, launching itself. So it looks like it's downloading a bunch of packages to our system, and... We're going to do this together tonight. There we go. At least it moves pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Are you a bit of a gamer? Me? Yeah. I'm a bit of a game you, watcher. My yeah. boyfriend's a big gamer, and I cheer him on. I'm a bit of a game cheerleader. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Backseat gamer. You can kill the Lord of Lies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. First time in. What do you want to do? I'm going to create a new account because I don't have one yet. Uh, you can also connect with a, looks like a, a PS3 account or something like that. I don't know. Uh, and we can log into an existing account, of course, if, uh, if you already have a Steam account. So let's create our account. We are uh, good users, so we're going to read that. In. Yep. And uh, we're going to agree. And, oh, look, another one. And agree to that. Okay, so create your account name. Enter a password. And then we're just going to go next. And you see that the steps are, are really quite simple here. Mm -hmm. Email address for my account. There we are. And now it's uh, creating the actual account on the Steam servers. So now Steam, I should note, is, again, you know, available for Windows, Linux, 
and Mac. We're doing this on Linux tonight because it just recently became available on Linux, which is an exciting thing. So now that I've got my account, I should be able to launch that. It's going to connect to the server using my account for the first time. And I got a warning there, and I'm just going to accelerate the video here. I got a warning there that my driver is not a current enough version to run Steam. So I'm going to go into my additional drivers in my system settings, and I'm going to upgrade to 304 branch. I use an NVIDIA card, so that's what I'm going to do. Now, 310, I find that uh, 310 can be much less stable than 304. Both of them are experimental. There's the, the warning message, just so you see. System is running an older proprietary NVIDIA video driver because I'm just using the stable version. It requires 304 or higher. So I'm going to activate the 304, not the 310 because I, I do find that it has more problems in my case. Um, so you may have to, you might end up breaking your video subsystem. I don't, I should just say for the record that I don't like that it's forcing us to install kind of beta software. Um, but uh, we want to just get this going for tonight. And just be ready to revert back if, uh, if you're not happy with the settings. Let's see what happens. There we go. Reboot the computer. And now we, uh, once that comes back up, we should be good to go. Okay. So I was saying a little bit, you know, I'm not too pleased about the fact that I've got to install these experimental drivers. Because mm -hmm. when you get into, you know, putting in 304 and 310 branch that are unstable of the NVIDIA drivers, you could run into problems. When I installed the 310 software, it completely crashed and wouldn't boot up my system. So oh. that would be a really big problem. So a so bit of a warning to you that you might expect that that could happen. Um, so in that case, I had to manually go into terminal and, and uh, use my xorg.com file. If you're not familiar with that, I would stay away from the 310 just in case. Okay. So, okay, so next up we're going to install our very first game. Um, so this is the way Steam looks. I've clicked on store and go into Team Fortress 2 just because you'll see that that is a free-to-play game. I want to try something that's free-to-play just to get me started. So you see how it's Windows, Mac, or Linux compatible and I can just go zip and install and it's telling me it's going to be six days. <laughs> Might not have it uh, today. <laughs> I guess they're assuming that I'm on dial-up. <laughs> you want to put an icon on the desktop or what have you. And there we go. So now it's just simply installing. And we're not advertising any particular game. I'm just throwing one on real quick that happens to be free to play and available on Linux. And I wouldn't mind showing you some of the, uh, the other options that are available here as well. It looks like it's not going to let me unfortunately. So once Team Fortress 2 is installed, of course, and click on play, and now it's still downloading, so I can turn on launch game as soon as it's ready. It's going to take me about, uh, looks like about 15 minutes, but I'll accelerate this. Wow, time flies here. The magic of TV is <laughs> incredible. There we go, all done. So I can boot her up, and uh, we can start playing. Just like that. So now I've got a game that is free to play, which means that it's not a free game necessarily. Mm -hmm. You may have to pay in order to get certain features of the game, but it's free okay. to get into the game. It's free to, to begin playing and install it and give it a go. But you may have to buy things if, if you want to be a real player. Right. Right. Tools and so weapons. So sometimes that can be in-game. But free-to-play games allow you to, to kind of check things out. To get hooked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Let's go to Steam Powered again, and, and uh, we're just going to take a look at what the store looks like now. I can't bring up Steam on the system live right now, just because I've put my graphic drivers back to uh, the stable branch because of some problems that it caused. Uh, but you can see here... So this is exactly what the store looks like from within Steam as well, so we're okay to do that. Because I'm on Linux... Of course, I'm, I'm going to want to click on Linux, and I'll see what games are available for Linux. And you'll notice that there's a price tag with most, most of these. And it's going to be about you know, 20 30 40 bucks. So it's the cost of buying a video game sometimes. I mean, here's some that are $3.99, $1.99, mm -hmm. more like app prices. But not a lot of free-to-play stuff. 
Right. Not a lot of free stuff, which was a little bit surprising to me because I, I imagine that you know Linux users, kind of across the board, uh, do hope for a fair bit of uh, freebies. But I think what Steam is doing is is quite a bit different. Is they're providing not free games, they're providing commercial games and a distribution platform for those, and yeah. making them available on Linux and Windows and Mac. Mm-hmm. So you can get these games and install them really really easy, run them on your system, and there's nothing to it. You pay for it once, and then you can install it as many times as you need to, right? So, looking at that, you know, some of the games are a little bit older, but still classics. That's right. Uh, But there are quite a few good games as well. But you'll see here, Windows, Mac, and Linux. So if I buy this game for 20 bucks, I can install it on any of those systems. So I can start with my Linux system and then move it around or whatever I want to do. So this is looking at it from the Linux perspective. Personally, I think it would be nice if I could zoom in a little bit further and say, okay, well, I want to see just the games that are you know, under 10 bucks or free to play only. Mm-hmm. But generally, if I click on the Linux tab, because I'm a Linux user, it's going to be just, you know, sorted by however they sort it. So you would think, okay, well, let's zoom in on, you know, the free to play games now that I'm in the Linux tab. And of course, now what happens is, is it's given me all the free to play stuff, but most of them are Windows and Mac only. Oh, look at that. This one's Windows only. Windows only. Windows yeah. only, Windows only. So you can see that as far as the interface goes, it's not as intuitive of, as I would have thought it could have been. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it is still very, very young, just came out to Linux, uh, and it would be nice to see some some improvements there. Windows, Mac, and Linux, free to play, so I can install that if I wanted to. Dwarfs. Yeah. <laughs> so kind of cool in the way that it's set up in that, you know, if, if I do click on a, let's see if I find a game. One, hopefully one that... See see what I mean? As a Linux user, a little disappointing as far as the selection goes for Linux. I'm seeing a lot of Windows and Mac. Mm-hmm. And I think that, that that's okay, but there should be a way to j- just focus in on... Just, just give me all the Linux stuff. Sort through. Yeah. I don't care about all this Windows stuff. We'll use Team Fortress as the example again because it is free to play and it's available for all three uh, systems. Let's make sure we mute the sound there. So here, you know, you get a a page with video screenshots and you know all that kind of stuff so you can go through find out a little bit more about the game you can play it for free with free to play or you can actually buy some of the packages that uh, are available and you see that some of them well now these are you know all different kinds of things this is like a package that includes many different games valve complete pack comes with 25 games for example so it's really you know it becomes this really cool delivery platform if you're a real gamer for a hundred bucks you get 25 games. That's pretty awesome. But then again, here I am looking at a game that I wanted to find because it's Linux compatible, and I see that the Valve Complete Pack is only for Windows. Oh. So a little bit unintuitive as far as that goes. We gotta we we have to be a little bit careful about which one. You know, when you're going through, you've got to click on the Linux, find one that that works for you. You know, whether it be a twenty dollar game or whatever, and you can buy it. As far as the distribution platform goes, it works really, really well. Really, really fast. I mean, it told me it was going to be six days, but it obviously wasn't. It took 15 minutes or something like that to get mm-hmm. the game. So, And this is new, so there are chances It's been available on, well, it started on Windows and mm-hmm. then launched into Mac. And then it's, it's been rumored for so long that they were going to be coming to Linux. Here we are. It's finally happened. And I think what's exciting about... You know, it is new to Linux, but what's exciting about it is it's going to really drive graphic card manufacturers to improve their drivers and to improve their support, uh, to build, you know, more gameable uh, drivers for the Linux operating system. So it's going to not only help gamers, but it's also going to help us uh, in, you know, regular users Mm -hmm. who want to be able to do 3D accelerated graphics and things. So I expect that because... Steam is requiring that we use unstable drivers. NVIDIA might say, you know what, that's that's driving a need for this driver to be complete, to be stable, and we'll see what happens. But uh, it could happen. Even though it's, it's unstable drivers, performance, very, very good. I can't show you too many clips, but uh, this is Team Fortress 2 on our system with an NVIDIA, uh, just a, a cheap NVIDIA card. You know, and frame rate is exceptionally good. 
Motion is good. Control is excellent. And this is, of course, through Linux. So, it's incredible. How great is that? So I encourage you to check it out. That's Valve Steam. It's steampowered.com. And we're just looking at how to install that and try it. There you go. And, you know, a lot of the games are fairly modern, good graphics, a lot of fun. This one's a little bit comic bookish, so <laughs> I don't mind showing you a little bit of the, the bullets and stuff because it's very comic booky. But Here I am watching video games. I feel yeah. like I'm back at Dave's house. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. So check that out, steampower.com. We're looking at it from a Linux perspective, but if you've got Windows or Mac, it's for you as well. Category 5 TV is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. Thanks for watching.